Well, here we go. Another crazy story. He says, am I the a-hole for selling the car I bought my wife after discovering she used it to meet her affair partner? I, 34 male, bought my wife, she's 32, a new car for our 10th anniversary six months ago. It was a surprise gift, a sleek red 2024 Audi A4 she had been eyeing for months. I saved up and made some sacrifices to afford it, but seeing her face light up made it all worth it. Well, I thought it was worth it. Fast forward to last week. I was using her laptop with permission to check our joint bank account. Huh? Why do you need to ask your wife permission to use her laptop? If it's at home, if it's a home laptop, just jump on the damn thing. I can see if it may have been a work laptop, but at home, just jump on the damn laptop. A message notification popped up from someone named Jonathan from work. It looks like she must have forgotten she had this messaging app open. I shouldn't have clicked it, but I did. Well, she shouldn't have been doing something on her laptop that could potentially bite her in her ass. And my world came crashing down. The message read, can't wait to see you tonight. Same spot as usual. <laughs> my stomach dropped. I know I shouldn't have, but I scrolled up through their chat history, flirty messages, explicit photos, she was sending this guy nudes. She has never sent me nude photos, never. Plans to meet up, and worst of all, multiple mentions of how convenient it was that she had her own car now to drive to their meetups. Even had conversations about how they broke it in. Now that's low. Why would you have sex in a car your spouse bought you as a gift? I am assuming that's what they meant when they say they broke it in. <laughs> I confronted her that night when she got home. She denied it at first, then tried to downplay it as just a little flirting. But when I mentioned the photos and meetups, she broke down, admitted to an eight month affair with her coworker. <laughs> this is uncommon. Most women will not come out and confess to cheating. They just don't. Said she was lonely and felt neglected, that I worked too much and didn't pay attention to her. So wait. Your husband works his ass off to provide for you and you award him by cheating on him? Wow. I was furious, hurt, and betrayed. But what really got me was how she used the car I sacrificed so much for as a tool for her infidelity. This Audi A4 wasn't cheap by any means. No, they're not cheap. I told her to pack a bag and leave. Well, she told me to fuck off <laughs> and said she wasn't going anywhere. I just walked away from her. After that, I moved my shit into the spare bedroom we had. I'm not sure our marriage can recover from this, but I knew one thing. I couldn't stand the sight of that damn car in our driveway. Every time I looked at it, all I could picture was her driving off to meet her lover. So I sold it, posted it online for a fair price, and I had a buyer within a few weeks. I used the money to pay off some debt and save the rest. When my wife found out, she went ballistic said I had no right to sell her car, that it was a gift and legally belonged to her. She's threatening legal action if I don't make it right. Her family is blowing up my phone, calling me petty and vindictive. Even some of our mutual friends are saying I went too far, that selling the car was a low blow, regardless of what she did. But I don't see it that way. To me, that car represented all the ways she betrayed my trust. Getting rid of it felt like reclaiming a small piece of my dignity. Am I the asshole here? Or was I justified in selling a painful reminder of her infidelity? Edit. Wow, this blew up overnight. Thanks for all the responses, both supportive and critical. I'll try to address some common questions, points. One, yes, the car was in my name. I hadn't gotten around to transferring the title yet. Procrastination finally paid off, I guess. <laughs> Two, for those asking about our finances, we both work full time. I make a bit more, but we've always considered our money shared, which is why the car purchase didn't raise any flags for her. Don't know if it was a good idea selling her car from under her like that. Now he hinders her ability to provide for herself, which could bite him in the divorce. Three, several people have asked if there were signs I missed. Looking back, yeah, probably. She'd been more distant lately, always on her phone, started dressing up more for work events. I can almost guarantee you all of those were not work events. 
I chalked it up to a promotion she got a few months back. Stupid of me, I know. Four, to the folks saying I should have kept the car out of spite, I get it. But honestly, I couldn't stand to look at the thing. It made me sick every time I saw it in the driveway. Maybe that's weak, but it's the truth. Five, for those wondering about next steps, I honestly don't know. Part of me wants to try counseling, see if we can salvage this. But why counseling? She's already showed you that she can't be trusted. Plus, she was sending news to another man that she's never done for you. Counseling? Come on, man. But another part feels like the trust is broken. I'm taking some time to clear my head before making any big decisions. Six, lastly, to address the Jonathan from work situation. Yes, I have informed their HR department, not out of vengeance, but because they were using company time, resources for their affair. That's a liability for the business. What happens next is up to their employer. Thanks again for all the input, everyone. This whole situation sucks, but it helps to get some outside perspectives. I'll update if there are any major developments. Update. Well, things have escalated. My wife wasn't bluffing about legal action. I got served with papers yesterday. She's suing me for the value of the car plus damages for emotional distress. Her lawyer is arguing that the car was a gift and therefore her property. They're claiming I had no right to sell it regardless of the circumstances. Well, if she was using that car to get back and forth to work, he may be on the hook for it. I've contacted a lawyer on my own to figure out my options. Initial consultation is tomorrow. This whole mess just keeps getting messier. Meanwhile, the fallout at her job has been swift. Turns out Jonathan was actually her supervisor. Big no-no in terms of company policy. He's been fired. My wife's been placed on administrative leave pending an investigation. She's blaming me for ruining her career. Says if I hadn't snitched <laughs> to HR, everything would be fine. I've said in previous videos, actions have consequences. I'm trying hard not to feel guilty about that. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, right? <laughs> Our friends and family are even more divided now. Some are firmly on my side, saying she's got a lot of nerve suing me after what she did. Others think I've crossed the line by involving her workplace. They say I should have kept it between us instead of airing dirty laundry. I'm starting to feel like I can't trust anyone's judgment anymore, including my own. On a slightly positive note, I've started seeing a therapist trying to work through all this anger and hurt. It's helping, I think. At least it gives me a safe space to vent without worrying about legal repercussions. I'll update again after meeting with my lawyer. Thanks for listening, Reddit. This has been a hell of a roller coaster. Update two, met with my lawyer yesterday. The good news, he thinks I have a strong case. The car was still in my name, which helps a lot legally. Plus, we live in an at-fault divorce state. Her infidelity could work in my favor if this goes to court. The bad news, he advises settling out of court if possible. Says even if we win, the legal fees could be astronomical, not to mention the emotional toll of a drawn-out court battle. He's drafting a counteroffer to her lawyers. Basic gist, I'll pay her half the car's value if she drops all other claims. It's not ideal, but it might be the cleanest way to end this mess. In other developments, my wife's been officially terminated from her job. The company's investigation found multiple policy violations. She's not taking it well, keeps calling and texting, alternating between apologies and threats. I've blocked her number for now. All communication goes through our lawyers. I've also started the divorce process. It's about damn time. <laughs> it feels surreal typing that out. But after everything that's happened, I don't see how we can come back from this. Too much damage, too much betrayal. Some of you have asked if I regret selling the car given all the trouble it's caused. Honestly, not really. Yeah, it's made things more complicated legally, but it also forced everything out into the open. No more secrets, no more lies. In a weird way, it's almost a relief. I know this isn't the happy ending some of you were hoping for. Life rarely wraps up as neatly as we'd like. That's a true statement. <laughs> but I'm taking it one day at a time, focusing on healing and moving forward. Thanks for all the support, Reddit.
it means more than you know. I'll post a final update once everything's settled legally. Until then, wish me luck. I've got a feeling I'm going to need it. Final update. It's been a wild few months, but things are finally settling down. Here's where everything stands. The lawsuit. We settled out of court. I ended up paying my ex-wife 60% of the car's value, more than I wanted, less than she demanded. My lawyer says it's a win, all things considered. The divorce finalized last week. We split our assets 50-50, no alimony involved. He is lucky he didn't have to pay alimony. Even in an at-fault state, remember, he makes a little bit more than she does. It was surprisingly civil, given how things started. I think we were both just ready for it to be over. My ex, last I heard, she's moved to another state for a fresh start. Part of me hopes she's doing okay. Most of me is just glad to have her out of my life. My job got a promotion last month. The extra money is nice, but most importantly, it keeps me busy. My mental health, still seeing my therapist regularly. It's been hugely helpful in processing everything. I have good days and bad days, but the good ones are starting to outnumber the bad. Dating, not ready for anything serious yet, but I've been on a few casual dates. It's nice to be reminded that there are still good people out there. Looking back, selling that car was definitely a turning point. Was it the smartest move legally? <laughs> Probably not, but it was the catalyst I needed to take control of my life again. So, final verdict, was I the asshole for selling the car? Maybe a little. It was impulsive and complicated things unnecessarily, but you know what? I can live with that. Sometimes you've got to do something drastic to shake yourself out of a bad situation. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me, Reddit. Your support and advice have been invaluable. If there's one lesson I've learned from all of this is that life goes on. No matter how bad things seem, you can always rebuild. Here's to new beginnings. So Reddit, do you think I was the asshole here to sell my ex-wife's brand new 2024 Audi A4 after I found out she was using it to cheat on me and see her affair partner? <laughs> yeah, this was a weird one, but sometimes property can hold up the divorce process. And sometimes lawyers recommend mediation, usually less expensive than a traditional divorce. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.